Just another day on the scalded summer night. What ho with a bing and a bong and a buzz, buzz, buzz. Uh, Jules Guides here and uh, today we're going to be taking a little stroll through Kenwood and Hampstead Heath. How delightful. Starting here at Kenwood is one of the most beautiful views in London. I believe it may be one of the protected views of St Paul's, is it? See, what they did, which is really irritating, is that they said, well, there are all these protected views of St Paul's from all over London, so you're not allowed to build some, a new building in front of St Paul's Cathedral. However, if you build something behind it, it doesn't seem to be a problem, which is really annoying. So what they've done is they've built the shard right behind St Paul's Cathedral, which kind of ruins the view somewhat. But there are, there are I believe, four specific points. Yeah. Is it four? Or well, there's a certain amount of specific points in London. Seven, I thought, but yeah. Yeah, OK. Hmm. Seven, apparently. <laughs> Where well, you're not allowed to build in, in front of St Paul's Cathedral. I think this is one of them. But anyway, uh, it's still a pretty impressive view. It's always very useful to know the best spots to go to the toilet. My mother used to know all the lady lavatory attendants in London. She was, this is a nice one in Kenwood House over here. And Laura tells me that it's quite convenient that you don't have to buy a cup of tea in order to go to the toilet because it's separate from the restaurant so you can sneak in. And they do have a jolly pretty garden where you can have tea and scones. Do they still do the Kenwood concerts here? They've stopped doing it, I think, because the neighbours complained about the noise. When I was young, they used to have these beautiful concerts here, so where you could sit on the bank here and then just they'd set up a stage over the pond over there and then they'd have lovely concerts and people would enjoy them throughout the summer. Typical, typical neighbours complained. The same reason why we don't have fireworks displayed in my house. So this is where in the film Notting Hill with Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts, they're shooting a film here. Julia Roberts is shooting a film within the film and Hugh Grant overhears her sort of he takes umbrage. It's just, just, uh, just over there. Beautiful old building, preserved to be an example of a 18th century home. It's rather nice. Beautiful uh, Rembrandt inside. And a Vermeer too. Oh, really? And Gainsborough's. And Gainsborough's. No Vermeer in here. <laughs> Lay down on my bed just to look at your hands. Up above us, the stars there. We can drink until the morning comes. This home is forget in my sand. This is the summer. Yes, down there there's a bridge. It looks like a bridge, but it's actually just landscaping. Kind of two-dimensional cardboard cutout. And through here there's a piece of artwork. How do I know? Because Tom told me. Alright then, who is it, Tom? It's Barbara Hepworth, Julian. It's a monolith. Empyrean. Looks a bit like me. And as if that wasn't enough art for you. There is an absolute stupendous Henry Moore just through these trees. That's pre precisely what I was going to say, actually. Yeah. Yes, I'm a, a big fan of Henry Moore myself. Uh, and it's in a majestic setting of Kenwood House. So it's um, an absolutely um, gorgeous place to come for a picnic or an afternoon with a bottle of wine. You should be doing these videos, Tom. What am I doing? Oh, I'm going to give you, I should have brought an extra bowl of hat for you. Yes, yeah, so the building up there on the hill is called Wittenhurst and by rooms it is the second biggest in London after Buckingham Palace. Uh, is that where they did uh, Fame Academy? <laughs> but it was completely empty for years and years when we were kids. Hmm. And this is a piece of art. By one of our greatest sculptors. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Henry Moore. And if the doors are big and too far, it could be just a What's that, Tom? Up there, oh, that's the old dairy jewels. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's um, yeah, but obviously where they did the new milk and the cheese and um, the food for the house. What well, Kenwood House? On a um, summer's afternoon, if they've got a open day at Kenwood, people dress up in the old costume of the day and make cheese the old way. I don't want to do that. Shot the git! Shot the git! We've got a randy ball down there. All Jules guys have to have at least one reference to With Nan and I or Black Adder. <laughs> Fancy drink? Spaniards in. Over this way, please. <laughs> On the way to the Spaniards, incidentally, just off Hampstead Lane, is uh, what's known as Millionaire's Row, otherwise known as the Bishop's Avenue, where, as a punishment at my school, you'd have to run all the way down Bishop's Avenue. It's called a BA run. But this has got some of the, <laughs> it's got some of the most expensive properties and the largest houses in, in London. Sort of mock Tudor, slightly tacky, a bit tasteless, if you ask me. 
Was it Sultan Brunei, Brunei here? Sultan Brunei is on the next road, Wellington uh, Avenue. Wellington Avenue is not Millionaire's Road there, that's just... Road, road, by the way. That's no, it's not, no, but it's equivalent of... Kind of Millionaire's Road. Yes. OK, so uh, it's Colonel Gaddafi's son had a house down there, but I think it was one of the assets that was seized when they captured him. Please give me another smile before... Now, one of the most inconveniently positioned pubs in London, and therefore one of the most likely places for my friend Ralph to arrange to meet you, is the Spaniards Inn. Halfway up Hampstead Lane, uh, not near any tube stations, you've got to get the 210 bus in order to get here, or you can walk. On the left-hand side is a listed building, as is the pub, the Spaniards Inn, which was built in about 1585. So I think it's called the Spaniards Inn because it was named after some old owners of the pub, Francesco and Juan Porrero, who ended up fighting a duel. Juan, I think, is the guy who died. He ended up being buried somewhere near here, which might be why they've got some swords on their emblem up there. This toll booth over here, this used to be a toll house and they tried to knock it down in the uh, 1980s or something, but of course uh, no one would allow them to because it's a listed building and it's extremely awkwardly situated as will be proven by this huge bus which is gonna try and get through that gap. It's another one of these haunted kind of pubs, supposedly. Juan, who uh, died in the duel, apparently he haunts the upstairs room. Or is it Dick Turpin? Dick Turpin was a famous outlaw. Highway robber, he used to do robberies up and down Hampstead Road, which is down here. And there are many records of uh, highway robbery in the Old Bailey records, uh, if, you, if you look them up, if you can be bothered. I can't. Well, the pub claim that John Keats wrote Ode to a Nightingale out here in the garden, but uh, I've heard that it's in the back garden of his house, which is further down, which will go past. The pub actually used to be owned by Dick Turpin's dad. They used to have his pistols on the wall inside. I don't think they've got them anymore, do they? Another ghost, yet another ghost, there's a third ghost that they've got here. In 1897, when Bram Stoker wrote Dracula, he was inspired by this lady in white who used to be seen um, walking through the beer garden here to uh, come up with the idea of Lucy as Dracula, who uh, they called the Bloofer Lady. And Van Helsing and Seward, his accomplice or something, take a taxi from outside the Spaniards Inn after having had dinner at Jack Straw's Castle, which we're not going to see because, like everywhere else, it's turned into modern luxury flats. Yours for a reasonable price of about £8,000 per week. <laughs> Many a highway robbery took place down this street here. And it was also along here that the Bloofer woman in Dracula used to abduct the children. What I really like about Hampstead Heath is it just you really feel like you're out in the countryside, you know, because oh, London really was a, a series of villages, really. and. Uh, you still get that feeling when you're going between Highgate Village and Hampstead Village, I think. Aha. Ah. Ah. Now, up here, just up here, is the venue where I was in a film called Scenes of a Sexual Nature with Ewan McGregor. Yes, that's right. I am supposed to be an actor. God knows what happened to my agent. Bastard must have died. Kids, how are you doing? As in... You want to talk about them or you want to have them? I think I do. I think I really want to have them. Uh, Billy, uh, you're gay. So are you. What were you doing in those bushes, Jules? I did actually have to play the part of a gay sunbather. It was right in, right in there. I just had a, a mini portable TV and I was watching the test match, the, the cricket. And uh, I didn't know that he was quite into cricket, but he kept coming over. It was the Ashes against Australia and he kept coming over and asking me to score. It was, uh, he was a very nice fellow, actually, I have to say. I thought I liked Ewan McGregor. Nice chap. Nice chap. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, the director, Ed Bloom, said that the biggest mistake he made was calling it Scenes of a Section Lager. Otherwise, it would have done very well. No one wanted to go and see it because they all thought it was a porn film. <laughs> you know what I like about this bridge here? Is I don't know if it's for real, but if you look on the bridge, people have carved their names in. But the years that they've got, they're amazing. I, I saw one, I'm sure it was like 1800 and something before. This is the summertime and I am breathing Incidentally, this hat that I'm wearing is called uh, a bowler hat or a, a cook, uh, named after the fellow 
that it was made for, I think, in Loch Satters down in St. James's. Now the reason they were made was precisely for this sort of caper, because the gamekeepers used to find that their top hats kept getting knocked off by the branches. So they, they had a, a better hat like this, which was more like a helmet. I don't know, when things fell on their heads, it would be a bit of protection. So I am more appropriately dressed for this sort of walk than you two, by the way. Fancy going for a swim, Laura? Yeah. This is the mixed bathing pond over here, and uh, there are also men's bathing ponds available and ladies' bathing ponds, where you can play badminton naked in the changing rooms, because I've definitely seen the guys doing that. Doesn't go on at this one, though. Um, <laughs> It's, it's beautiful surroundings. I mean, really, when you're swimming in there, you just feel like you're in some sort of enchanted garden or something. Keats hair, Keats close. Oh, and this one's Keats Grove, Keats everything. And that is because just up Keats Grove is Keats House, where actually he only lived for about 17 months. Then he moved off to Rome and died of consumption like everyone in those days. I mean, he was only 26, well, he died, 25 when he died. Well, he wasn't regarded as a, a great poet in his lifetime. It was only after he died he became quite famous. They actually called him the Cockney Poet, you know? Doesn't sound very Cockney to me, his poems. Where but to think is to be full of sorrow, and leaden eyes despairs, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes, or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. All these lamps, really nice. They make it feel like you're in Narnia or something. When I direct my BBC period drama, I think I'm going to set it up here. Nice, ugly sign. They really could have done better than that, couldn't they? I rather like it. You know, it's not always bad when they knock down buildings because it reveals old advertising and things like that. So up there, for example, I love that. Look, L-N-E-R, King's Cross for Scotland. Oh, that's an advert for the railway. London North Eastern Railway. That must have been a really old advert on the side of that building. I'm getting a bit tired now because uh, this is the second video we've shot today. I'm time for the pub. But just before we finish, I really want to just point out this pub here, which it looks like it might be closed at the moment because they're renovating it. It's called the Magdala Tavern. Anybody who has seen the film Dance with a Stranger with Rupert Everett. Was Rupert Everett in that film? This ear pub, what I am standing outside of, it's called the Magdala Tavern, and it's very famous because in 1955, Ruth Ellis, who is the last woman ever to be hanged in Britain, shot her boyfriend. His name was David Blakeney. Um, not to be confused with Sir Percival Blakeney. Sink me. You know, uh, the Scarlet Pimpernel, Baroness Orcs. Oh, God. Anyway, David Blakeney was her boyfriend. He was like a racing car driver, and she used to work in a nightclub. And one day, I think that she had this very fractured relationship with David. This used to be a newsagent, so she'd have stepped outside the newsagent shop here, and he was coming outside the pub with his mate. Anyway, and then she shot him outside here, and then turned herself in afterwards. She said, yep, yeah, I don't know what came over me. I just couldn't handle it. You know, it was me. I did it. Guilty, Your Honour. And I think over here, you know, now, unless I'm mistaken, you can still see the bullet holes in the walls. I think, I think these are actually the bullet holes. Wow. Apparently she was very civil once she was in the, in the prison cells. After they arrested her, she was perfectly nice to everybody and just said, yeah, yeah I did it, you know, but uh, I'm glad I killed the bastards. I do hope they don't turn this into luxury flats like all the other bloody places yeah, in London. Right. It, looks like it looks like it's gonna be renovated as a pub though. Thanks for watching. <laughs> if you enjoy my films, then please hit the subscribe button. And if you care about anything I have to say or do ever, then watch some of my other films because there are about a hundred of them on my channel. And tell your friends and get someone to write about me and make me famous and everything. See you next time, folks. Tally ho.